guys, so we are here doing our first ever Q&A video. Um, never done one of these before, but we had so many new followers on Instagram and we have 52 subscribers right now, which is, I realize, pretty small in the grand scheme of things, but for us that's quite a bit because I think this time last year we had around like 17, yeah. so we're, we're getting there, guys. So anyways, we asked on Instagram, we did a poll asking if people would be interested in a Q&A type video, and it was a unanimous yes. So we put out a post on Instagram also asking for questions, um, asking you to tweet us questions or PM us questions, and you guys did. We're just going to answer all of these to the best of our ability, and I hope you guys like this. I hope it gets you, uh, gives you a chance to get to know us a little bit better. So, you ready? Yeah. Okay. So, the first question is, how long have you two been together? Three years. Just, uh, just about. Just about. Yeah. Our, um, our anniversary... Okay, well, this is actually kind of a long story. We were together in about August of 2015, but we didn't start officially, like, Facebook official dating until October, so we've just decided that from then on out, our anniversary is October 11th, so almost three years. Yeah. Um, do you watch other YouTubers? And if so, who do you watch? So we kind of decided Boy. that um, we, we watch a lot of YouTube. Yeah. We, uh, we don't have cable, like we don't have regular TV, so we watch like Amazon Prime, Netflix, and YouTube are yeah. our main sources of entertainment. Go ahead so, with your top um, three. Schmitty. Yeah, he spells weird, but... We'll link all these down below. Yeah. Fitz. Uh, and Captain Sparkles. Captain Sparkles. I love are, Captain are Sparkles. My, are my top three. Okay, so... Um, my YouTube tastes have kind of changed over the years, but the three that have been the most consistent, probably... In, sorry, Instagram notifications. Um, probably in my history of watching YouTube. Um, the Tim Tracker which I'm sure you guys probably know because we talk about the, the Tim Tracker quite a bit. Um, also, Blair Lamb or Blair Blogs has been a very, a relatively new favorite of mine. She's just very easy and fun to watch. I really like her. And then also, totally unrelated, C Nanners. <laughs> I absolutely love C Nanners and I've been watching C Nanners for like seven years. Those are our, we, we watch a lot of other YouTubers, we watch a lot of YouTube, so um, those are definitely not all of the YouTubers that we watch, those are just the main YouTubers that we watch. Okay. Um, so the third question is, what do you do for work? Um, I'll start. I'm a pharmacy technician in a retail drugstore, and um, that's, that's pretty much it. I'm a pharmacy technician, I'm also going to pharmacy school, so yeah. And um, I am in a receiving department at uh, a Menard store. It's a, a little more uh, Midwest sort of thing. Uh, it's the closest, relatable to like Home, Home Depot, Depot or Lowe's. Lowe's. Yeah. It, same thing as that, but I work in the receiving department and I mess with cardboard boxes all day, every day. It's not fun. super super exciting and I get to be a glorified legal drug dealer yeah fun so times that, so that's what we do for work um let's see if you could travel anywhere right now where would it be I think I know what yours would probably be London London yeah I know you've been wanting to go to London yeah and we will um London. we do plan on moving to Florida next year and we're slowly getting things in order to get that underway so that's that might not happen this year or next year but that will definitely be, be soon yeah yeah um mine this one will probably be a little bit farther off um greece athens greece for sure that's one of the places i've yeah. always wanted to travel to and it's just like a cultural epicenter of awesomeness I would love, love, love to go to Greece. So that would definitely be mine. Uh, let's see. Uh, number five. five. How, How many, many tattoos ta do you both have? That one was mine. Oh, that was yours. I'm sorry. How many tattoos do you both have? Brent, how many do you have? None. Brent has no tattoos. And 
I'm I'm getting there. She's slowly chipping away. I am. Um, I have six, and one of them is on my leg, so I'm not going to show you that because I don't feel like getting up. But I have one, two, uh, this one, uh, I don't know if you can tell, it says I am the storm. Uh, three, four, this is actually Brent's initials in Circular Gallifreyan from Doctor Who. So that's, that's pretty cool. Wait, one, two, three, four, oh, five. And then six is on my leg. It's a giant uh, sugar skull made with flowers. So those are all mine for now. How do you afford to travel so much? Okay, so... I'm going to let her explain that because she always um, takes care of all of it. I'm actually not going to explain that in this video. I'm going to be uploading a video entirely okay. on budgeting with travel because... I have mixed feelings about this question. This is a question that both of us get quite frequently from friends, from co-workers. Um, it was asked from someone on Instagram when I put up the poll. And on one hand, I do think it's quite a personal question, just the way that it's worded, because usually the way people ask it is exactly like that, is how do you afford to travel so much? And I don't really feel comfortable talking about my financial situation with other people. That's not really anyone else's business. However, I can most definitely share with you some budgeting tips and um, just to give you an idea, like for instance, one of the things that we do that I think is pretty major is um, we don't ever pay for luggage. We pack in a backpack every time. The only time we have ever traveled, and we've probably traveled a dozen times in the last three years. And the um, only time we've ever brought a suitcase was for my Alana's suit. Alana's graduation, yep. yeah. For my suit. And that was only because he had a suit, which if you haven't seen the pineapple suit that he wore to Alana's graduation, I will link a video up above <laughs> oh where you can see the suit. But we didn't want that to get crinkled in a backpack, so we, we did bring, um, we did pay for a checked bag at that point, but it's just little things like that. Um, we don't pay for our seats. We let them randomly select, but if you check in exactly 24 hours before, like if my flight is at 10.50 in the morning, I'm going to be 24 hours prior at 10.48, I'm gonna be there ready to click that button as soon as 10.50 hits. And when you do that, nine times out of 10, you're going to be seated with your party. That's the thing, I don't pay for seating. I don't pay for luggage. We, we pack in a backpack and that's actually another video that I'm going to be posting. We're going to be doing a couple different videos. Um, one of them is going to be fully explaining our budgeting tips for traveling specifically to Florida. And the other one is going to be how I pack in a backpack because I actually leave for Florida in two days. Well, I, I have tomorrow the next day and the day I work tomorrow, I work the next day. The day after that, I'm going to Disney and Brent's not going with me. No, I'm not. Not um, this trip. Actually, when we went to New Orleans, mm -hmm. we were able to get, we had five people and we were all sitting next to each other. Uh, Kelly wasn't, but she she booked separately. Uh, okay, so then but, four um, people and we were all sitting The four across. of us who all booked, like we all booked under the same thing, like I booked all of our tickets. We didn't pay for our seating, but when I checked in, we all sat exactly next to each other like three of us were on one side of the aisle and then Brent was on directly ag across the aisle so even with four people we all ended up sitting together um, but yeah there will be separate videos on both how I pack in a backpack and because I actually have to do that like very soon and our budgeting tips for traveling especially to Florida so I'm gonna skip that question for now because there is a lot to that one okay so what is the number one tip you've learned for going to the parks? Um, this question wasn't specified whether it was Disney, Universal, Six Flags, or anywhere in general. So, um, really the one thing that I have to say that works for all of them is plan ahead somewhat. Okay, uh, a lot of our trips are spontaneous, but for Disney specifically, if you want to get the most out of your Disney vacation, you do need to plan ahead. Um, Universal, a lot of times we can just, and we have, like, hey, you know what? Want to go to Universal? Let's book a let's book a flight in three weeks and let's go. 
we have done that plenty of times. Yeah. And it works, and that's fine. But with Disney, like, for instance, um, if you don't book quick enough, you're probably not going to get a spot on property. And if you don't stay on property, you do miss out on a lot of the... A lot of the experience, a lot of cool things like um, Disney's Magical Express, for instance. If you stay on property, Disney's Magical Express is a free shuttle service that will pick you up from the airport and take you to your hotel and then back, which is really awesome. A lot of airport or a lot of hotels don't have free shuttle service to and from the airport. And what did that cost us between the two of us? Like sixty something dollars for a shuttle. Yeah, um, for from like the airport an Uber or a taxi. Yeah. yeah, it's very expensive to get transportation from the airport. So even just little things like that. Um, so there's that. There's dinner reservations. There's fast passes. All of those things that you really do need to book in advance because they will book up really quickly. So with Disney, honestly, the number one thing that I can think of is as much as you can plan ahead. Even if you're a pass holder, plan ahead. Like for example, um, we booked a trip for my birthday mm -hmm. and we have my my sister and her boyfriend going along mm -hmm. her boyfriend was an added uh, person later on yeah and we are still battling to try and get him in for a reservation for one of the restaurants we want to go to and this has been yeah. like a two-month battle to keep we checking back for call. cancellations and yeah. it's just because constant. when i when i booked it it was just me and brent and his sister alana but then um when we went to arizona for alana's graduation we met and fell in love with her boyfriend steven so we invited him to come along and we've been able to add him to everything so far all of our other reservations our room everything is all set except ohana so especially restaurants like that we actually even had an easier time getting him into be our guest which i've never even eaten at because it's always so fully booked like we've never been there i've never been there um we were able to get him added onto our reservation there no problem but ohana we've been calling a couple times a week and we still have not they they said they couldn't add him today could they yep i had just called today and yeah. they said that there have been no cancellations i've Ugh. asked there's anything they can do and it's all yeah. about if someone cancels pretty much so disney plan ahead universal you really don't have to as much it's a little, a little it's more a, flexible it's a little bit more flexible um we do a lot of spontaneous trips to universal six flags well we don't travel for six flags because we have one about two and a half hours away um up near chicago so we just drive up there but um that doesn't really take any planning anything mm -hmm. a lot like people do travel for it but it's not as big of a it's not a big enough theme park i guess to where planning really makes a difference um oh fun fact that we have learned in universal that i'm going to count in this um tips for going to the parks do you remember when we did the water ride challenge yes we did the water ride challenge in universal and i'll link that video up in the corner here and we discovered that all of the water rides have lockers, but you have to pay for them. Whereas every other ride, like Rip Ride Rocket or Men in Black, all those other rides with the lockers are free, they charge you for the lockers for the water rides. Which I think is kind of BS and ridiculous, but they want to make their money. So, one tip I have for you if you're going to Universal and you have a bag with you or any equipment, like... Um, camera equipment, cell phones, anything like that that you do not want to take on the water ride. Um, something that we are going to do in the future is we're bringing a trash bag to put our backpack in and then have the backpack on the inside the trash bag on the ride with us because you have to take it on the ride otherwise what are you going to do with it? Mm -hmm. Unless you want to pay for a locker. If you want to pay for a locker that's fine. I don't, I'm not paying for a locker. That's one thing that um, that I definitely found out kind of the hard way is that you have to pay for lockers for Universal for water rides. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. I would bring like a poncho or a trash bag or something, just something waterproof or water resistant to keep your valuables in because you will have to take it on the ride with you unless you want to pay for a locker. What do you pack in a carry around bag? Mostly what we take to the parks, um, like the obvious, your wallet, your cell phone, yeah. also 
a battery power, like a power bank. Yes. Um, or like extra batteries if you have a camera. I never want to be with a dead phone in the parks. Yes. Um, there have been a couple of times where our phones have died and yeah. it was a pain to find each other. Kind of along with that and along with the tips for going to the parks, one of the really cool things with Disney is that they have the power bank specifically to Disney where um, you spend $30 one time and we do have a video of us buying this which I can I can link up here if you're interested. Um, you pay $30 one time, you get a little power bank, and then you have unlimited exchanges. So you can go to like any of the resorts, any of the, the parks, they'll have these like vending machine looking deals where you put your old battery in, you switch it out for a new one, so you don't even have to charge it yourself if you don't want to. And I think that's really cool. I think that was a really great investment because I've even used it outside of Disney and just charged it myself. But mm -hmm. it's nice that you don't have to do that. If exactly. you if your phone dies or your phone's getting low on battery, something you have is getting low on battery, and you you plug it into that, you drain that, switch it out for a new one. Super easy. I like that. Um, but otherwise, in a carry around bag. Um, I can show you guys a little bit more in depth when I'm doing my packing video because I will have a separate bag for my like essentials, but it's really just cell phone, power banks, wallet, um, magic bands, you know, or like, you know, our universal passes. Otherwise we we really try to be as minimalist as possible in the parks. We don't really carry a whole lot on us because we we're gonna be in the parks for 12 hours. You don't yeah. want to be burdened down with too much. Okay, um, what is the number one thing you can't function without e when you go to Disney besides your phone? Power banks. Power banks. <laughs> Power banks for sure. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. Again, we try to be as minimalist as possible when we're in the parks. Um, I mean like, you know, I like to keep chapstick on me or something sometimes, but we really don't keep a lot on us. Oh, actually, one thing that I did forget about, it's always in my purse. I am a big girl. I have big thighs. I keep chafe gel on me. You can go to Walgreens. It's called like Lana Care. Go to Walgreens, buy it. Works like a charm. Because trust me, it's hot. Chafing happens. <laughs> happens to everybody. And <laughs> Just I mean, about. I don't, I don't chafe. Uh, even when I'm at work or just my day to day things. Your boxers make it so that you don't. Exactly, but even on hot days in Universal, when I'm walking around a lot, sometimes I do, and I have used it before, and it helps. It does help. So, um, if you have chub rub issues or anything like that, I would strongly recommend going to your nearest Walgreens or other drugstore and getting a product called Lanacare. It will help, believe me. Okay, now, now we're on. So, okay. let's see, what do we got next? Let's uh, see. What is your most treasured Disney memory together? Mm. I think we have the same one. I think so, too. Um, My 21st birthday? Yeah, when you first brought me. Yeah. I, when she was first going to bring me to Disney for her 21st birthday... It was really cute to see how excited she was. She was so excited to show me around Disney World for the first time and just to show me around where she used to work and live. And, I mean, I was excited to go to Disney World. I've never been. I've been to Disneyland over in California. And she told me that Disney, Disney World, World is way better. Way is way better. So I was excited, but I think I liked the fact that she was so excited, and just her energy about it was better than the experience of being in Disney World itself. And I definitely have to agree with that. And from my side too, I do get very, I don't know, excited doesn't even seem to really accurately cover how I feel when I'm in Disney or especially when I'm showing somebody new around, like showing him around for his first time there was awesome. Plus not, not only that, but we were there for my 21st birthday drinking around the world in Epcot. Well, I mean, he wasn't drinking, but I was, so yeah. that's always fun. But, um, I always love 
showing people, especially people who I care about, new things in Disney. Um, not just Disney, though. New things in Disney. New things in Universal, too. Um, when we went in November, last November, with my parents to Disney and Universal, I got to take my dad to Harry Potter World for the first time, and it was incredible. Like, just seeing him look at all of this for the first time. I don't know, it's just there's something really neat about being there for someone's first time experiencing mm -hmm. just how truly magical those places are. Because it doesn't it doesn't matter who you are, it does something to you. I think um, the first time that he and I went together, which actually that was our first vacation together too. Yes. So yes, that it was, was that was our first vacation together as a couple and it was my twenty first birthday. Um, we were going to Disney and it was our first time in Disney together. It's the perfect thing trifecta. That was yeah, that was definitely I think our, our favorite time yep. in Disney together. What is the coolest Disney park secret you've heard? Now I I've, I've been thinking about this and I know that I've probably heard all kinds of crazy stuff when I worked there because I'm I don't know if you guys know, but I did do the college program. Uh, so I did work there for about eight months, and I'm sure I heard all kinds of things, but I don't really know offhand. But you have a cool one. Uh, a friend of hers uh, from down in Florida, his name is Matt, um, we went on the Haunted Mansion, was it? Yeah. Uh, I went on the Haunted Mansion. My favorite Mansion, ride at Magic Kingdom, by the way. And I went with him, and on the Haunted Mansion, there is... A part where you travel backwards on a slant and uh, when you reach the bottom you have a graveyard worker um, groundskeeper groundskeeper thank you who looks terrified and one of the things that he said is that the it's a really big theory that people have that when you're going backwards it's like you couldn't handle the stress of being in the haunted mansion so you end up jumping off the roof and falling to the floor and then that's when you reach and he's so terrified is because he sees you die and then your spirit come out and that was a, a thing that he told me and i thought it was actually really cool because it makes a lot of sense because i didn't yeah, understand that's... why we were riding backwards i just that yeah. it was just another part to the ride that's but when a pretty he said crazy that, conspiracy yeah. theory but it's really cool because well, I mean the whole time in the ride they're talking about you know 999 happy hunts you know we we could use a thousand you know blah 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 whatever so I think that's the part where they're making you the thousandth yeah you know okay I actually th thought of one um it's not really a Disney Park secret I guess it's just more of a fun fact but for those of you who have been on Space Mountain feels really fast, right? feels like you're going so fast. Do you know how fast it goes? 27 miles per hour. That was something I learned when I was a CP, is that the fastest that it goes is 27 miles per hour, which is practically crawling. They make you feel like you're going so fast using wind and like strobing lights that kind of like beam past you. So it feels like you're going faster than you are, especially because it's dark and you're going in tight circles during a lot of it, but what I heard is that 27 miles an hour is the fastest that it goes. I actually thought we were going really fast, and then I asked her, and then she ruined my day. <laughs> I didn't mean to ruin your day, I just think it's cool. <laughs> I, th I thought we were going really, really fast, and she's like, no, you're only going 27 miles nah, an hour. Nah, you're crawling. I was like, oh, well darn. <clears throat> what is the best ride at Disneyland in your opinion? Now, we've never, well, You've been to Disneyland. I've been to Disneyland. Do you remember any of it, though? Uh, no, I haven't okay. been to Disneyland since I was, like, seven or eight. And I've never been to Disneyland, so we're going to answer this question for Disney World. Um, go first. Fast track. By far. That um, was fast. Yeah. <laughs> no no <Nah>. pun intended. <laughs> no, I like fast track because you get to design your own car. When you're going through, it'll show... Like, say you're doing the compatibility test, right? After you're done with it, it'll show up on a screen. Like, it'll rank all of the people who are in the same, like, car as you, but who have designed different cars. So it'll tell you, like, 
yours was number one in capability or yours was number two in power. So it's just, it's really cool seeing your designs in comparison with other yeah, people's. Yeah, and just, it I takes like, it through. I do really like Test Track, <clears throat> and it's fun designing your own car. Yeah. <clears throat> My favorite ride in all of Disney is, well, okay. This is going to be I'm a hard just, question for her. No, it's not that. I'm, I'm going to preface this with the fact that I have not yet been to Pandora and I have not yet been to Toy Story Land. I will be in two days. So Without me. Sorry. Um, so as of right now, we are not including Flight of Passage or um, anything those two parks related because I've not been there. So... Um, the best ride at Disney World, in my opinion, even though my favorite is the Haunted Mansion, I think the best ride... Uh, I don't know. They're all so different. Um, they're all so different. I mean, like, Rock and Roller Coaster is super fun because it's more like a roller coaster. And Tower of Terror, I have a really hard time with Tower of Terror because it terrifies me. But... It is a super awesome ride. Like, it is genuinely a great ride. It has great theming. <sighs> I don't know. Told you it would be a hard question for Yeah, him. you're right. I also, Pirates of the Caribbean is also awesome. And, like, they're all awesome in such a different way. Because, like, Tower of Terror has such cool theming. And Rock and Roller Coaster is just fun. Because it's Aerosmith. And it's, you know, a roller coaster. And it's all blacklight and stuff. Um, Pirates of the Caribbean is just super cheesy, but so fun. I don't know, I can't, nope, I'm not answering it. <laughs> I can't do it. What's your ideal Disney date consist of? I was thinking, and we talked about this, and he agreed. Let's go with this. So, eat slash drink around the world in Epcot, and... I'm only going to include Epcot Magic Kingdom in this because, I mean, I love Hollywood and I love Animal, but if we're talking date night, eat and drink around around the world in Epcot and catch the monorail to Magic Kingdom, watch the fireworks, but I don't, ooh, where's the best place to watch the fireworks from, though? I like watching the fireworks from the Poly Beach, but I also like watching fireworks from the Contemporary. That's what we did. One we of did? the last times, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. That was that was good. Yeah. Sitting on the beach watching the fireworks yeah. is really nice. Just sitting in the sand. But I mean actually okay, so eat and drink around the world in Epcot, take the monorail over to Magic Kingdom, find a spot in the hub, sit, wait, watch the fireworks. Chillax. Or you know, if you live there, go home and do it all again the next day. Yeah. Which hopefully is what we're gonna be doing in a little over a year. Yes. Oh my gosh, we're going to save so much money on travel expenses <laughs> oh, <laughs> from not going to no Disney idea. six times. We're going to Disney. Wait. Florida. Just Florida in general. But, di like, Disney Universal. Going to Florida six times this year. Last year, we went... Really? Yeah. This year? Yeah. January, April, me in July, um, September, October, December. Six times. So this tells you how much I am in the loop on a lot of things. Because <laughs> whenever she wants to go to, to Florida, she plans it all out and then tells me. Well, I mean, I... like, I, I knew all about them. I knew it. But she plans it out because she wants to have a very valid yes. argument on how you know how affordable it is and, mm -hmm. and when I ask her you know when she tells me she wants to go to Florida I'm like well you know this and that that and this and then she just has a counter argument for everything well I found these cheap flights here and then if we do this and then we do that then you know it could be really cheap and I'm like well, I can't really argue with that so this this is definitely yeah a woman that you don't want to argue with um, yeah, actually, we have six Florida trips planned this year, and two Arizona trips. Mm hmm. Air, um, Alana's graduation and oh, Christmas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, we're traveling eight times this year. We travel a lot. Wow. Wow. 
So, anyways, we long do. story short, that was our ideal Disney date night. Let's go on with the next question. What ride would you go on with what character? I want to be, like, super basic and say that, you know, like, obviously it'd be cool to ride, you know, like, for instance, um, what was I thinking? Snow White. The Snow White man. The Snow White? Take Snow White on, like, the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train ride, you know, like, take the characters on the rides associated with them. But then I thought that's too boring, so I want to take Ariel on Tower of Terror. You stole mine. That's what I wanted to do. No, uh -huh. That's what I wanted to do. Well, I. You didn't tell me that. Well, now it's just gonna sound dumb when I come up with. I want to take Ariel and Tower of Terror. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, um, well, sink, well, great minds think alike. Ooh. So since I stole yours, come up with a new one. I always get the rides mixed up between Universal and... Rip Ride Rocket is Universal. I know, I okay. know. Um, oh, good lord. I'm trying to... Th I'm trying to think of what ride. King Kong? Is that... Universal. Dang. Uh, yeah, I'll do like Cinderella on Mount Everest. Okay, so he's yeah. taking Cinderella on Mount Everest. Yeah. So basically, I guess we have the same idea. We want to we wanna freak out some, some princesses. Yep, that's pretty <laughs> much it. All right, let's see. What ride do you like the least and why? Tower of Terror, because it drops. They didn't mention what park this was in. I'm assuming this is Disney. So for Disney, I'm going to go with the um, the Tea Party, Mad Hatter's Tea Party, because I hate spinning rides. I can do anything. A guy can do flips and twirls and all that BS. I can't do just straight spinning. Yeah, my first experience with Tower of Terror... <clears throat> <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, not... yeah, I'm bringing this up. So Come my on. first experience with Tower of Terror, okay. So in Tower of Terror, there is a haunted elevator. And what it does is normally it's just supposed to drop and then that's it. But then there's the supposed haunted one where it drops but bounces back up and drops again, bounces up a little more and then drops again. After you think the ride is over. After you think the ride is over. She didn't tell me that. I did too. I told you that in the line ride. As just, I'm in the line. I just didn't mention it until we were already in line. And we had waited too long to get out of line. Yeah. And so I, I already I didn't like, lie to you. I went against it went against everything. Okay. In I, my whole body to get on that ride, and then she tells me it might shoot back up and drop again. <laughs> Okay, for for the record, that ride terrifies me, and I still go on it because I'm an adrenaline junkie. Yeah, well, I'm, you know, as much as I like roller coasters, okay, and the thing is, I don't like drops. Weak. I don't like just straight drops. Yeah. Though I, I can't handle those kind of things. Like, you know, you get on a roller coaster and it has, you know, a big drop, whatever, it's it's over within a couple of seconds. But things that just drop, mm, mm, mm. no thank you. All right, you. all right, let's go to the next one. Other than the Disney parks, what parks do you like? Um, Universal. Universal and Six Flags, for sure. Um, yeah. I do really want to venture out, though, and do, like, SeaWorld, Aquatica, Busch Gardens. I've been to um, SeaWorld. You know, stuff like that. I have, too, but it's been a long time. Yes, Like, has. I think the last time I was there, I was probably, like, 16. Um, I went with a friend of mine and her family down to Florida, and I believe we did Busch Gardens, SeaWorld, Aquatica then, but... I did SeaWorld I in California. So, I mean, we do, like, a lot of other theme parks. Oh, also, um, uh, Cedars Point in Ohio. I really like Cedars Point. He Never hasn't been, been there yet. There. Yeah. But, um, we do want to venture out and do some different theme parks, too, as well as just Disney Universal and Six Flags. We, it just so happens that we have passes for them. Mm-hmm. So, those are the ones that we go to the most frequently. But, um, I guarantee 
after we move, believe me, there will be Bush Gardens videos and Aquatica videos, and like we're gonna be visiting all the different theme parks. Well, and since and since Legoland, we'll be living down there, we love won't Legoland. have to travel to Florida. We can now travel to things elsewhere, mm -hmm. like other theme parks. Yeah. Instead of you know having to travel to Florida, so that'll be nice. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So, um, all the theme parks. Number 17. What is your favorite Disney movie? Moana. <laughs> okay, wait. I want to show you something that real was, quick. That was faster than my fast okay. track. Okay. So, um, kind of hard to see this shirt that I'm wearing. <laughs> um, this is a shirt <coughs> from Blair Lamb Designs on Etsy. I'm going to link it down below. Um, and it has the line from Moana, which one is it? Um, eh. oh, the, see that line where the sky meets the sea, it calls me. I freaking love Moana, and I'm not even just saying that because it's new, because everybody always falls in love with the new ones, like, when Tangled first came out, it was all the rage. When Frozen first came out, trust me, I worked in Disney when Frozen came out, it was all the rage. It's not just because it's the newest one. I just love it. I love Moana. She is, like, strong and independent and awesome. And I know there are a lot of other Disney princesses that are, too. Mulan, Merida. But something about Moana, I just absolutely love it. Favorite Disney movie? Lion King. Lion King's a good one, too. I like Lion King. I grew up with Lion King. Yeah. That was... Lion King's a classic. He made me a stronger man. <laughs> it taught me how to handle death. Fair enough. Uh, let's see, what else is next? What made you choose to move to Orlando? Everything about living in Florida? Okay, um, so again, I was a CP. I lived down there for about eight months, and I 100% fell in love with it. When I moved down there, it was my first time ever living out of my parents' house. I was 19. I had never lived on my own before, and the first time I moved out of my parents' house, I was moving 22 hours away. So there, there's that, first of all, but I just 100% fell in love with it because, I mean, it does have its flaws, just like everywhere does, but Orlando is so close to the ocean. Like, there's, there's beaches on both sides, there's theme parks galore, there's things to do, the weather is amazing, like, I can, I can deal with the heat and humidity if I also don't have to deal with negative 45 degrees. Yeah. Because the problem with the Midwest, and Illinois in particular, we can get up to 100 degrees, no problem, with crazy humidity, like, not that long ago, it was like 98 with a, what was it, like an 89% humidity? Yeah. It gets hot and humid here too, but it also gets down to the coldest I've ever gotten felt here, which is about four years ago. It got to negative 45 degrees Fahrenheit. That is freaking ridiculous. We had snow drifts taller than I am. And like we just, we get some crazy weather here. So I would deal with the heat and humidity if I also didn't have to deal with the cold. Yeah, definitely. So just weather and there's things to do and it's just everything there is so beautiful and the beaches are amazing and I just I was 100% my best self when I lived there yeah and in Florida you could step outside your house and there's something to do yeah here we have there's to travel well, at least a half an hour to get to anything yeah but no you you have to travel too far to get to anything Six Flags is two and a half hours away and I mean we still do it but like Chicago is a couple hours away um, Peoria is an hour away everything halfway decent is at least like a 30 to 45 minute drive if not an hour or more so yeah. that is one of the things that I miss the most about Orlando is that there is always something to do and I don't I get restless easily I don't like just sitting in the house and I mean like there are days where you know I just want to be home like doing laundry catching up on stuff whatever but I get restless pretty easily I mean, even even me, I I can sit and do nothing for hours, but there are days where I just want to go do something, and a lot of the times, 
I don't care what it is, but it's always nice to be able to have fun in the process. And like she said, in order to do that, half hour minimum. Well guys, I think that's gonna wrap up the Q&A for this time. We do still have some questions left that we didn't answer. However, this video right now is already at 48 minutes. I'm going to cut out as much of the Bibble unnecessary babble. bibble babble as possible but this is still going to end up being a very long video so i'm going to save the rest of the questions for the next q a vlog i hope you guys liked it and got to know us a little bit better um if you ever have any questions anything you want to ask us please go ahead we're pretty much open books for the most yeah. part like there are some things of course we're not going to divulge but not very much we'll you know we'll pretty much tell you whatever you want to know so I hope you guys liked it, and we'll see you next time. I'm really looking forward to filming our How We Afford to Travel So Much slash budgeting video and also the How I Pack in a Backpack video. So keep an eye out for those ones, and we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. Like, you know, take Snow White on the Snow White and Seven Dwarfs train mine or... Let me start that over.